Hey there guys, so in this video I want to talk a little bit about the decision making theory of Herbert Simon. Herbert Simon is a, a Nobel Prize winning economist, one of the few um, organisation theorists that has gone on to win that award. In fact, probably the only organisation theorist that's gone on to win that award. And Simon's has been incredibly influential, not just in organisation theory, but in psychological sciences, computer sciences, things around artificial intelligence, machine learning, behavioural research, because of his emphasis on decision making and understanding and modelling decision making processes. So, let's talk a little bit about Herbert Simon. I think it's useful to contextualise Simon's thinking because he wrote a lot about a lot of things. He was a real polymath and he wrote and had opinions about very informed opinions about a whole bo bunch of stuff but it's actually I think kind of useful to go back to where he starts his his um his academic work to help understand his organization theory because there's a lot that's been said about Simon as a theorist of decisions but it's important to recognize that he built his theories of decision making primarily by studying organizations so Simon it's probably fair to say came from a, a a tradition or background where the kind of rational decision making model, the sort of homo economicus model, dominated. And we see this in his early work with Alan Newell on modelling and simulating decisions. So, working with Newell, Simon um, developed what they called the general problem solver, and this was their attempt to try to model the decision making processes that took place for general problem for any problem it was their idea was essentially that you could sort of abstract out context and pretty much literally write a computer program that would solve problems for you there's some discussion here as to whether they were hoping to simulate decisions that people would make or to build a computer program that could optimize or make better decisions for people and I think there's a bit of a blurred line between the two but the key point is that Simon's early research was based on this idea that you could model decision making and that it almost didn't matter what the decision was about there was a general abstract decision making process that people went through and you can hopefully see how this stimulates a lot of subsequent thing, thinking in artificial intelligence the idea that you can model and get a machine to think like or even to think for a human very much goes back to, to Simon's early early work. But Simon was also in, inspired by Chester Barnard who the organisation students amongst your management students may have come across for his influential text The Functions of the Executive. Barnard was particularly interested in understanding why executives, so C-level leaders of organisations, worked the way they did, what functions that they served. And um, one of the core arguments in Chester Barnard's work was the idea that when people enter into an organisation, they have they develop what he called a zone of indifference. And what he meant here was that there's a certain if you think of an individual's uh, mental capacity or decision making, there's a certain amount of it which people are indifferent to, so that when they go into an organisation they'll do what they're told for this amount of it, but it's never complete, so people will always resist being completely told what to do. And I think this inspired Simon to think about decision making, not just as an individual activity that you could model, but also thinking about how does do people on the other side of that zone of indifference, when they're in an organisation, make particular, unique types of decisions and so Simon came to develop a, an idea on organisations which focused on them as groups of decision makers. So he said for example the activities of a group of people become organised only to the extent that they permit their decisions and their behaviour to be influenced by the participation in the organisation. He said an organisation is a complex network of decisional processes. So he, he he threw his interest in decisions and then through Barnard came to see organisations as collections of decisions that work in some way. He wanted to explore then how was it that when people enter into an organisation they put that zone of indifference together and make particular types of decisions. 
So he was able to study this empirically. Quite rare for somebody working in computer simulations, but he went into an organisation that was, well, to two organisational settings, I suppose. He went to study um, and public recreation facilities, the management of public parks, sports fields and such like in Milwaukee in the late 1930s. And these facilities were managed by the school board on the one hand and the city public works department on the other. And Simon observed, and he talks about this in some of his um, autobiographical works, how these two organisations would make completely different decisions on the same topic. And he struggled to explain this in terms of rational decision making, in terms of, sort of general problems, if both organisations were going through the same decision making process. You would have thought they'd make the same decisions about the same thing, but Simon saw the opposite happen. And this is what helped him to unpick and to develop his understanding of organisations as decision making units, as networks of decisions. In keeping with kind of general sociological theories of the time, people like Talcott Parsons, who emphasised the, the need for some core central values to bring together groups of people, Simon um, followed what was sometimes called the goal model. David Silverman calls this the goal model of organisations, which starts from the idea that an organisation or a department in an organisation has a, has a goal or a mission that it's trying to achieve. And Simon's argument was, we can understand organisational decisions as being rational in terms of achieving those goals. Now, there's a question as to where those goals existed and how they communicated, but this is the core of his, his thinking, and his term for this was bounded rationality. He argued that the members of organisations are expected to orient their behaviour, this is a quote, to certain goals which are taken as organisational objectives, and as such, people in organisations behaviour can be understood as being rational to the extent that they help to support those goals. So he said it's as if the organisation creates a boundary around an individual's rationality, it points their rationality to achieve a specific goal. And this, Simon said, helps us to understand why people within a department will make the same kinds of decisions, but people in two different departments or two different organisations will make different decisions about the same thing because their rationality is bound in different ways. And in his work in administrative behaviour, which is what I'm going to just be talking about really in this video, Simon then tries to detail how it is that we can go from an organisation's goal to the limits on people's decisions and he sets out a series of mechanisms which allow organisations to bound or limit the rationality or decision making of their members in certain ways. So he talks about training and recruiting people. He talks about imbuing people with loyalty to the organisation. He talks about direct interventions in people's decisions like authority and policies. And where his work I think gets really interesting is with his distinction between facts and values. He makes a big point of arguing that one of the things organisations, one of the tools organisations have to bound the rationality of its members is by providing them with certain factual information and by providing them with certain, he calls them value premises, through which people can interpret that information. So, if we go back to his example of the school board and the city public works department, both those organisations were trying to manage the same facilities, public recreation facilities in Milwaukee. But they both have their own goals. And the way those goals manifest themselves is they each focus on and give their members particular types of information. So the school board might be more interested in you know, the engagement in sports or the development and play opportunities for children and the support for parents. The public works department might be more focused on the cost of maintenance. So they each can have facts, but they've each also got values, which as an organisation helps to limit the way people interpret those facts. And it's through these processes, Simon argues, that organisations limit or bound the rationality of their members. And Simon brings this together to suggest that organisations, managers, or administrators as he calls them, 
have a key function, and that is to provide an environment of decisions in their organisation such that behaviour that's rational from the standpoint of the organisation is also rational from the perspective of the group or the individual within that organisation. So it almost becomes natural that people will make a particular type of decision. And in this way, Simon argues, organisations bound not only by limiting rationality towards a certain goal, but they limit it by shaping the kinds of decisions that people can make so that people in an organisation aren't free to do anything as long as it achieves the goal. They have a limited, or bounded set of ideas, possibilities and solutions to problems. Through this then, you start to get a much more um, nuanced understanding of decision making. No longer is there an idea that there's just a general model that will explain everything. Now we have to understand firstly how do people make decisions in specific situations and how do they shape those situations. And it's here that Simon's work fed in not just to simulating decisions but into the idea that a computer could start to make its own decisions and you can get artificial intelligence operating. But at the heart, and this is the key point, Simon's work is describing decision making within organisations. And it's interesting that this was where he got his key insight, which subsequently has led into so much research and a lot of the subsequent research in behavioural science, psychology, consumer research and so on, has individualised Simon's work. So you'll see a lot of um, discussions of bounded rationality in terms of individuals' cognitive limits, whether that's the time, their information processing capabilities. But Simon's original theory was focused on the ways organisations limited the rationality of their members.